Yo, 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 what up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brothers in Arms, a new way for men to talk. I am your host, comedian Edgar Rivera, and I am joined today, of course, by my brothers, Dr. Dan Ratner and comedian Eric Nieves. What's happening, brothers? Great to see you, Edgar. Eggie. And you too, Eric. I didn't What's mean to suggest. Brothers? I did not mean to suggest it was not good to see you either. I just was responding. Well, I, to I, I I know what you meant. I know you never you're never happy to see me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Eric just I, jumped in I, I on that one. Pecking, I know where my pecking order is. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? It's been a minute, guys. It's been a minute. I'm happy to be back here. Um, how you been, Doctor? I know it's I, just for the for the viewers and listeners. Um, we've been on for like three weeks now. And, um, you know, it's like every time we get a flow of things, it's like, ah, and then something happens where, you know, we all have lives, we all have schedules. It's very, it's not easy. You know, this production takes a lot of work, but um, we're finally back. So, Dr. Dan, how you been? Well, first of all, I'll say, like, the more we do this, the easier it is to just feel like I can sit down with you guys and talk about anything, like, just coming back. So, that, I'm loving. Um, It was not the easiest week, but, you know, sometimes... Sometimes the the things that are hard in a week uh, or in a in a time period they can kind of recenter you, they can remind mm-hmm. you of like who you are, what your mission is, and that that's kind of where I'm at. I'm kind of thinking about, all right, what are what's what are the real important things? Sometimes it can give perspective, so it's nice. Nice. Now, now I know the, the Latino in me is like, what happened, Doctor Dan? Talk to me. Like I've always <laughs> wanted to say this to a therapist. Talk to me, Doctor Dan. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can get into it. I won't get out. We'll, I think it'll fit into the episode, so I'll, I'll nice. bring it in where it where it applies. Nice. Well, I'm glad uh, the family's good. Everybody's good. Every yeah, everything that matters is going well. That, that's, and that's, that's what's up. That man. is what matters. That that is what's up. That is what matters. What about you, Eric? How you been, brother? I was just digging that latest Danism. Everything that's important <laughs> is going well. So everything Danism. that matters is matter. Danism number one, and also you know the, uh, the the work Edgar's referring to is the fact that we don't know. Uh, Doctor Dan is blessed to have a preset recording area whereas Edgar and I have to take ours apart uh every show so that's I'm just that's the work I think Edgar was talking about the talking is easy it's that yeah. setting up the damn lights is the, the hard part but I'm I'm good uh I'm good and I, I I finally after uh two and a half years I finished my degree got my master's degree congratulations uh, Eric this month. yes yes there you go. Right. yes and, Last and time nothing, we did the show, you were still um, doing the finals, and you were all stressed out, man. Now it's like, yes. Well, yeah. so let me let me ask Eric how, how do you how do you feel now that you're done? Has it sunk in that you're done? Does it feel any different? Uh, it's it was anticlimactic. Wow, you know, it was like Jesus. And, and you now explain what? that? And can you explain then, were you that just to impressed me? by the word he used? I think you <laughs> yes, were. I'm very impressed by that word. Anticlimactic. Well, he should know that with uh, all of all of Edgar's ladies use that word. Against very anticlimactic. I don't know why I'm laughing. That could be an insult. I don't know why I'm laughing to that. <laughs> no, you know, like I guess you know when you go to school, there's like this anticipation, you know, and, and maybe it was, it was when you were younger, like what, a graduation represented some kind of like move to the next level, right? You know what I mean? But then I just woke up on Tuesday and I was the same guy with the same job on Monday, you know. So um, I I think maybe the uh, the impact will be felt. I still feel like you know. I, I almost have a homework assignment still to do. I got to get used to not being a student. Mm-hmm. And uh, and now it probably won't hit me until I get a job where I actually need the degree to get. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just got right now. It's just I'm finished. And now what? I still go to the same job and, you know, same. Bonus. Right. If there's, if there's no difference yet. Yeah. It wouldn't you know. it wouldn't really sink in. But I will say this. Like I went to school for a long time, took a lot of tests, all that stuff. And especially about like the licensing exam to to get my license to, for for psychology because that that test was ridiculous. One, once ridiculous in that it like did not apply to anything I actually needed to know. So once I was done with it, I still to this day am happy I don't have to do it. Like I I have gratitude about that. I think you will over time come to love this more and more. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy it's done. I did get a small raise, by the way. Oh, I was about to tell you. I was yeah. about to tell you. Why yeah, don't you just did, send a copy? I did, get a, I did get a small raise. They gave me an extra thirty cents an hour. Wow! <laughs> wow! What are you gonna do with that, bro? That's crazy. Thirty cents an hour, bro. Thirty cents. Yo, <laughs> I, t- I said I can't even buy lunch 
with this yeah, raise. You can get some McDonald's fries. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the three for three menu or whatever, like a three dollar $3 bundle. Wait, Eric, is that menu. is that a real thing? They actually gave you a thirty cent yes, per hour that's raise. Yes, that's a legitimate <laughs> thing. I literally the the lady called me and said congratulations, uh, and they gave me a little title change, you know, and they said congratulations, this is your new title, and you're going up from this to. And then the lady stopped and said. Wait a minute. I have to go confirm this with my supervisor. Can I call you back? Because even the HR lady was like, "This is do I did I even need cents? to call him for this? I could have texted him this. Has this so little? Like, yo, you got thirty cents coming. Uh, but let's break that down. I think that's like twelve dollars a month. Yeah, I'm serious. Like, I couldn't. I could barely buy lunch for the raise I'm getting. Uh, for, for, yeah, it's. But let me ask you though. Did they give you this raise because you graduated? No, no, they gave me the raise because they because of the title change. It actually had nothing to do with me going to school. I just got a title change because I was assuming different res- responsibilities. I was led to believe it was going to be a higher raise, and it ended up being, you know, what it is. And at that point, I was like, well, I, I'm not going to say no, I guess. It's, you know. <laughs> I'll take, take it. it. <laughs> <laughs> if I was you, I would just send them a copy of the degree. But by the way, I got this. Can I get an extra 30 cents? No, nah, you, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the best thing I probably do in my life. I'm going to set up an Indeed account, and then I'll just, you know. No, but it's cool because <laughs> it's, it's like Dr. Dan said. You know, it's crazy because it's something you work so hard for. You know, you work very hard, and then when you finally do get it, it's like you, you don't see, you don't see, you know, the changes that come with it unless you apply for a new job, unless you want to move up that ladder yeah. now that you have the, the equipment to go with it. But it's like... Like you said, I woke up on Tuesday. And I felt yeah, the same like, way. Yeah, you know, like when Dan when Dan finished his exams for to be licensed, he had a license. You know, I finished my exams and all I had was like finished exams. Yeah, I mean, I will say this: uh, it was these things do tend to be anticlimactic because the buildup is so big. It doesn't. It almost doesn't mm-hmm. matter what would happen. You get there and it's going to be an anticlimax. But for me, it was mostly just like a relief to be done. But even that relief to be done. That was easier with the the psychology exam. When I finished school, I, I don't know. It's, it, school's an interesting thing. It's a totally different different way of living, and uh, there are aspects that I that I miss. And actually, it's funny because I was thinking about the you know our topic today fits right into school stuff because we wanted to talk about peer pressure today, and peer pressure at school it's a prime place for it. And uh, there are certain things about school that I don't miss. And peer pressure is definitely one of them. Although when we get into it, you'll see that I, I actually was pretty impervious to peer pressure, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But I, oh, I, 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 I'm glad to be done with, with school. I, I am. <laughs> impervious. Excuse me. Another big word. Um, I, like feel, big, I feel like this. I feel like this when I got my GED. <laughs> Listen, I, I was there for you. I remember we rented out a Denny's and... Um, you know, we you had, had a GED. Tables. I was like, who do I show it to? Who do I show it you know, to? It's like, you I, know, well, I, you know, you don't get the degree for like, uh, like two months after, uh, until about two or three months after you graduate. Do you so actually re- have a graduation? Are you, are, are you doing the graduation itself? Or? No, I could, I couldn't attend. I didn't attend my graduation. Um, uh, my, my wife's, my wife's cat passed away the day before. And oh, like, uh, man. you know, uh, 18 years old, this cat. So, you know, I, like, you know, the, I've known this cat for over 18 years. And, wow. So, neither well, one I'm of sorry, us were man. in the mood to go to Radio City Music Hall to, you know. That's where it was at? Yeah, it was at Radio City Music oh, Hall. Oh, man. Now, Eric, I was going yeah. to make a joke about peer pressure to attend the graduation ceremony, but then you told me your cat died, so I was like. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> you know, I felt more pressure from people, and it, it does, it, more people wanted me to attend because they thought I deserved it more than I wanted to attend. You know what I mean? Like more people were like, you have to attend. You put in all this work. My wife's like, you have to attend. You put in all this work. I, I never wanted to attend, to be honest, at all. Because I was like, you know, I'm, this is not something I'm accomplishing out of, you know, undergrad or, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a father of four that is sacrificing everything. I just, I just went and got a degree. You know, like I'm not like there, there's no. If you know, there was no story to me that warranted. Oh, let's go to do a graduation. But my my mom wanted me to go. My cousin wanted me to go. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go. Um, the only reason I didn't go was because of Frodo, 
And now mm. my wife is probably going to think I had something to do with his murder. I mean, his passing. Murder. I'm just kidding. That's, 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 <laughs> no, I'm, well, I mean, you could, you can't blame them though for wanting you to go. I mean, that's an accomplishment. Don't say you don't feel like you did. You did something great, man. A no, lot of people. I, I, I'm not. Oh, all right, let me let, uh, let me rephrase. I'm not diminishing the accomplishment of getting a degree. What I'm saying is, is that the graduation should be representative of something that the graduate feels they've achieved. And to me, I was about the degree, like getting the degree was my graduation ceremony. Nice. Yeah, but, you, you know what I mean? Like that was my walking down the aisle. That was but, my, but, all that stuff. But let's talk about this. I mean, I agree with you, Edgar, that you can't blame it for wanting that. And it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I, I really do think there's a, a certain thing in society where we, we really should start to call some things into question a, li a little bit more, where if Eric didn't want to go genuinely, and it mm -hmm. was his event. Why would we be pressuring him? I understand supporting him. I understand encouraging him. Like if maybe he was being, you know, modest or didn't want, you know, that can be helpful. But like genuinely, it's really interesting in society. A lot of times we don't accept that people just want what they want. And that's okay. Especially if it's different than how other people think. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I feel bad. I took four, uh, I took four tickets from people. To be honest, to me, that's the way I was kind of looking at it. Um, now, I will let th all this said. If my if my mom lived in New York, I would have had no choice but to attend. Let's just make that very clear. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she lives in Georgia, so um, you know that made it. Maybe that had something more to do with it. Uh, in that there was nobody. You know, my wife's my family. Wife is family, but as far as my side of the family. Um, really wouldn't have been represented at the graduate. It would have been just me, my wife, my uh, and you know my father-in-law, my sister-in-law, and their family. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it, you know, if it's it's different when it's your mom, it's your aunt, it's your uncle. You know, um, I think that I you know that kind of pressure. If my mom lived here, I listen. I would have been to that. Okay, I would have I would have been to that. I would have gone. And that's yeah, you just, can never that's take just that because, away from her. Oh, go ahead, Edgar. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying you cannot take that away from mom if mom wanted to, you know? No. That's like no, a if proud she moment to go for her see mom. That, then, then, yeah. But, you know, she, you know, I've been blessed. She's seen, she's seen me graduate from undergrad. So, uh, you know, and, and to me, that was kind of like, that was enough of a walking stage moment for me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it, I've already, I, when I did that, tw you know, 25 years ago, uh, and to see the pride on her face and the pride in my family's face and they rented a whole bus to come up as a group, you know, like that. I, you know, sometimes you just got to stop and not make the sequel. Sometimes the original is just that good. Mm -hmm. Now I feel guilty because I, I, I wouldn't have even let my mom <laughs> pressure me into that sort of thing. <laughs> well, it, that, it, look, my mom would have pressured you to let her go to your graduation and my mom was so persuasive you would have been like, you wouldn't even need to meet her. She'd be like, Mira, I'm going Eric, to graduation. I, I didn't tell you this, but that actually happened. I told, yeah. see, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. She was there to recertification. When you renewed your license, she goes, hi, I'm Boomy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Well, brother, congrats, man. I mean, I, I will you, give man. you a Appreciate round it. of applause and, and give you flowers because not everybody does what you did, I you did. know. Um, at, you know, and and it, it's a wonderful thing, man, when you don't. I think the fact that you don't want to take the credit, that you don't want to walk the walk, it's like it shows the, the person that you are deep down inside. You're not doing it for no one else. You're doing it for yourself, and that's what counts the most, you know? I mean, if I would have been in New York, we would have been there. I would have fucking, I would have been there with you, dude. I would have I'd be like, throw your hat up in the air, Eric. I want to catch you. <laughs> well, and, and, I will, and I will also say this for the record. Graduation ceremonies are notoriously boring. Oh, You yes. know, they're excessively long. And it's not like in the movies where they call your individual name and you walk across this stage and people could see you. It's usually your group of seats stands up. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, it. uh, uh, do they MAs in science? <laughs> I mean, that's after really, all that time. That, that after an hour and a half of listening to people you've never seen. And I went to school <laughs> online, so I saw no one. OK, it was not like I was going to see a professor. I didn't know what they looked like. You know what I mean? They could, they could be coming idea. to my show stalking me. I have no idea. So, I think they you know, should have done an online graduation. That's where it goes. They, well, that's no, what they, they should have done. They, they, they had the opportunity to participate online. 
a, a different ceremony the week before. I was like, I'm not going to do that shit. But mm -hmm. I mean, but think about it. This, if, the, if they had that need, if they needed to have the graduation ceremony in Radio City Music Hall, you know how many motherfucking people they, they is probably going to be in there? That's a big space. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I guess, you know, it, knowing it also wasn't going to be a very intimate event. Like, why bother? Yeah, this has been a, a walk in the walk for Eric, Doctor Dan. We started the show and we like let's, I know. let's digest how Eric really feels. We about just stumbled graduating. right into it. <laughs> and Doctor Dan is like, I want to throw the peer pressure. I want to throw some peer pressure on. There. No, no, no. Hey, no. Okay, hold on. Let's let's put this in the proper perspective. You told me peer pressure. You told me that I peer. should bring it up. Yes, it was really interesting. Bring. A little meta moment. Meta moment of peer pressure. That's what's up. And man. I caved. <laughs> what if I just held out the whole time? What if we were just like 40 minutes in and I was like, I'm not. No, we're not going to talk about peer pressure. But like, you know, it, it is amazing. I, that was a good look. I'm a grown man. And yet I felt pressure from my peers, you know, because people always associate peer pressure. I, and I think we, Dr. Dan, just to really get into this, they always see it as being pressured into doing something, uh, an act that's negative. Uh, like, you know, like peer pressure to do drugs when you're a kid or peer pressure to drink. But the peer pressure to feel like you have to participate in the ceremony, your heart's not in it, but you just want to make people happy, that's a different kind of peer pressure, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it's a really good point because uh, if, we, if we ignore the fact that people can get pushed into seemingly positive things, we're ignoring a whole side of, of peer pressure. I mean, is it at its worst when you're pushed into doing things that are bad for you that you really don't want to do? Yes. But I, I think peer pressure is... It's a really interesting topic to me because I wonder I wonder what you guys think about what what makes one person much more susceptible to it than others. Because like, I'm sure you've seen it. You see certain people who are just like, nope, I'm not responding to peer pressure at all. And then other people who just give into it all the time. What what makes the difference? Mm. Edgar, you uh, want to, uh, I mean, wow, I, I know for a me, uh, uh, I being a people you. pleaser, I think sometimes, you know, for when you want to please the people that are close to you, I think that 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 kind of makes you more susceptible of uh, trying to belong, I think, is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. what, you know, like if if you're if you're someone that doesn't feel like they have a, a strong friendship foundation, maybe maybe you feel like you need to do what you think everybody else is doing just to have friends. Um, I mean, it's a I know that we're not a leader. What happened? A follower and not a leader. Well, I, I wouldn't, you know, so that's not exactly peer pressure because, you know, we can't all be generals. Armies exist. They need privates. You know what I mean? Like, I, the, uh, not everyone is meant to be a leader and it's not bad to be a follower. I don't like, because I, I, sometimes I think, you know, like, like if you're a follower of the rules, I don't think that makes you a bad person. If you're a follower to policy, if you're a police officer, I don't think that makes you a bad person. Um, if you're if you're a street level sergeant, I don't think that makes you a bad officer if you're not a, a lieutenant or, you know, uh, running a, uh, a borough or something. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I mm -hmm. guess, you know, yeah, there'll be people that will always follow. But I don't think that's necessarily peer pressure because there's no pressure needed. They're ready mm -hmm. to follow people that yeah. are ready to follow. They're ready to go. You know, well, to also, me, pr pressure is something that's you're forcing. There's more force involved with it. To me. Well, I also think, you know, people follow for different reasons. Like if you're following, but it's right in flow with who you are, that's, yeah. I think that's more what you're talking about, Eric. Where yes. It's like, yes. That's what I was trying to say. And yeah. you're smarter than me. So thank you. <laughs> All those certificates are coming in here. Well, you'll you know, get there one day, Eric. I'm not the one who just got a 30 cent per hour raise. Listen, yeah, yeah, and I'm right. going to spend it all on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say we told you to. It's not peer pressure. You do what you want with that. When we when we talked about this yesterday and, and we came up with the topic of peer pressure, then I, I was thinking about it all night. And I'm like, man, there's so many different ways of peer pressure. If you think about it, I was like going crazy. I said, like, man, this is there's a lot of ways in peer. It's positive peer pressure, is negative peer pressure, is the 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 pushing peer pressure, you know. And and like I wanna I wanted to ask you, Doctor Dan, to answer your own question. That's what I want to hear. The answer to your own question that Eric just took the stab at, and I like completely like peer pressure my way out of it. That was good. That was like <laughs> mental judo. You were like, I'm, I'm yes. not accepting this. I'll turn it back on you. <laughs> Well, the good news is I, I always have something to say about these things. So when I do ask questions, I do have an opinion about it. And, you know, 
I think the thing that makes the biggest difference is, and some of this might sound obvious at first, but I don't think it is when you when you dive into it. The, the surface level is obvious, but what's below it is pretty complex about why it is. I think it often is about people feeling just comfortable with themselves. If they're comfortable with themselves, then it doesn't matter what somebody else says. They, they don't have the, the same conflict. But if they do have conflict about themselves, then they're going to be much more susceptible to it. You know, because it's it kind of fits with what you guys said. If you're a people pleaser or if you want to fit in, the people who already feel good about themselves, they, they don't really care if they fit in. And I think about high school as a, like, class, middle school and high school, classic times where are people really going to feel good about themselves and, like, they know themselves and they're totally solid? Not likely. Very, very unlikely that people that age are going to feel that way. But there are some people who did, and I would watch them, and I would just marvel at it. I was like, wow, they can just withstand whatever. Like, they can say, I like this, and I don't care if anybody else does. And I, I was like, I don't know <laughs> I don't know who these people are or how they got that way. And to me, that's the question. That's the deeper question is, how do, how do people get that way? Mm, I don't know. I wasn't that way. I, I, used to, uh, I used to admire people like that in high school that already seemed to have a, have a sense of, of an identity. You know, mm-hmm. um, over, you know, maybe, you know, it could have probably a lot to do with their upbringing. I mean, I blame peer pressure. Peer pressure made me a smoker. That's mm-hmm. right. And, and it was and, and I was a grown man. You know, um, when 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 you first start doing comedy, you know, Edgar could attest to this. Like, um, it, you know, and maybe it probably applies to therapy, too. I shouldn't just limit it. But when you're new to a field and you're trying to establish who you are in that arena, um, you want the you want your peers, your fellow comics, the comics that you're coming up with, you're working with, like you want them to uh, not only to think that you're good. I mean, that's obviously the first thing you want them to think that you're good, but you want them to you, you want to fit in, you want to belong, you want to be a part of that group because you know this is something you're aspiring to be. And I remember um, the first time I smoked a cigarette was on the suggestion of another comedian. Um, and it's, that said, it goes really great with drinking. I had never smoked a cigarette in my life at this point, but I decided to do it. I did it, and I threw up the next day, and I've been smoking ever since. And this was, you know... <laughs> That's not usually the way throwing up works. You thought, you thought it was going to change, right? And I threw up the next day, and I gave it up. And no, no, but you'll I be just surprised. Never stopped. You, ask a lot of smokers about the first night they smoke. There's, there's usually some level of vomiting involved. Uh, but uh, the first night, and then the, after that, all of a sudden you're craving them, and that's exactly what happened to me. But you know, I, I'd, you know, if I, I had a day job at that time, if someone at my day job would have told me, I think you should try a cigarette; it goes really good with drinking. I probably would have been like, "You stupid fuck, who are you?" Uh, you know, <laughs> I, you know. But I'm in, I'm in the comedy world, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, you know, I'm in the nightlife. I'm thinking, all right, yeah, what the, he said it's good. I mean, it's cool. He's funny. And uh-uh. dumbest choice I've ever made. I don't regret practically anything I've ever done in my life. That's one thing I do regret. Something so simple, right, Dr. Dan? Something so simple as one person saying that to Eric and then completely changes everything around. Because I feel like there's people that peer pressure you with, with words. And then there's people that peer pressure you with the way they are. Especially if you're trying to be in that same, you know, like when you look, like, for example, like I'll talk about comedy because that's what we do. But when I see a comedian up there. And, and he's killing, and he's man, he's like everything is hitting, and you like, he's 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 peer pressuring me to like, oh my god, I want to be just, I want to do this, I want to do that, you know, which is good because it's a positive peer pressure because you can eventually better yourself. But there's so many different ways of peer pressure, and 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 thinking last night, I was like, how does that affect us as men now, as grown men? How does peer pressure affect us? It's a great question. I want to make a distinction though about something you said just to highlight it. You know, we can feel pressure from different situations versus Mm -hmm. somebody exerted pressure on us. Mm -hmm. And I think so, uh, you know, in this show, we talk about all kinds of things. And we we I think the feeling of pressure that comes without peer pressure is a whole other show. Like we we should we should talk about that. But, you know, what I was thinking about here is the people who actually kind of push in a certain direction. And it happens so subtly. I'll give you an example. I was talking to somebody a number of years ago. And they were asking me where I got my news from. And uh, 
and I just said, listen, a lot of times it's just I'm, I go to the Yahoo site because I do fantasy sports and I see something. And Yahoo is just a, it's just an aggregator. It just brings news together. So it's not like I go to Yahoo because I think Yahoo has the best news. But uh, the guy kind of laughed at me and was like, oh, that, that's not, that's not the right way to get news. Well, right there, somebody is saying there is a right way. And they're starting to steer me towards, oh, okay, well, maybe I should, uh, maybe I need to go get this newspaper. I need to get a subscription, uh, you know, an online subscription to this. But the whole idea that there's a right and a wrong, I think, is where we run into trouble. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I'd like us to look at as a society is like, why are we saying that? You know, and, and people, they don't even factor it in how big of a deal it is, how mm-hmm. it could leave people feeling. You know, in that situation, I didn't think it was a big deal. I, it's not like I changed my news habits from that. But some people would have, and especially if there's a large group, especially a large group of the typical population that they tend to hang out with. I mean, that's one thing I was thinking, like this, the, even the cigarette thing, Eric, I, I'm curious, was there something about that one person that swayed you? Was it, was it um, a lot of events together? You know, had you ever, it sounds like you had never thought about it before. Well, I used to, I actually used to, my, both my parents smoked cigarettes and I never did, which if your parents smoked and you didn't, that was pretty amazing. So I, I never had the urge. I think it was, it was, I think it was, I think it was two things. Uh, one, the person and, you know, believe it or not, it's been so long ago. I couldn't even tell you exactly who it was. I, I know that I know that one of my closest friends at the time was with me, but I can't t- remember the name of the comedian. And I just remember, like you know, I I thought he was I thought he was cool, and I wanted to be cool. And and also I was you know when you come from a daytime kind of job, and all of a sudden you're working in a nightclub kind of job, and you're a comedian, it's almost like a different world. And in that world, people were smoking. You know what I mean? In my daytime job, I had, a, you know, I had an office and I was working with clients. There was no smoking world. But then I was, I was looking at this other world and I thought, maybe that's part of that world. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, it seems to be a lot more accepting of this and it's not that big of a deal. And then I just tried it. Right. And that was it. I think um, it, the same thing goes with drinking. The same, you know, the same thing. You go to a club, you're like, oh my God, everybody's drinking. And it's like you're your pressure to drink, you know? It's like when you tell someone, I don't drink. You know how much pressure I get from that? Like, what do you mean? You, you don't drink? And they make me feel, like, trying to make me feel bad or weird about the fact that I don't drink. And I do drink, I, but I don't I don't need it. You know what I'm saying? But when we go, when we put ourselves in different scenarios, that's when the pressure comes in. Yeah. So it, it's crazy how you said, Dr. Dan, it's something that could verbally be, verbally be said or something that you feel automatically because you're trying to fit in well and especially if the whole group that is around you is like that and drinking's funny that way i mean remember when we had charles on and charles mm-hmm. charles is a recovered alcoholic or recovering whatever his terminology is for it and people were even pressuring him like instead of respecting oh you made a choice yeah, yeah. that's good for you. Like, that that was crazy to me. Come on, you could have one a week, Charles. Just one a week. Like, Come on, who does imagine, that? Imagine, pre- imagine thinking that it's okay to pressure a recovered alcoholic to drink. Like, <laughs> you might as well, like, be like, I want to push somebody off a cliff. Like, what? <laughs> well, look, I, um... What you know, do people we get t- out look, of that? This whole thing with your peer... Like, I think when the initial shock, when people find out you don't drink, it should stop there. Because, you know... Yeah, I know that especially when you're at a bar and everyone else is drinking, the first reaction is going to be like, oh, you don't drink? Now, the next reaction would be like, well, then good. So then I know if there's an alcoholic beverage on the table, I know it's not yours and I won't make this mistake of picking up your drink by accident. That would right. be my next line to make the person laugh. And then I, but, and then I would just do what I'm going to do and not judge that other person. Now, that's different than somebody saying, Yo, you could have one. You know what I mean? Like, that's completely different. But I think... People as a collective, and I don't, I, I don't understand. Like, it only takes like one or two people to be like, you could have one, you know. I think the majority of people would be more like me, like, you know what? Just let them not drink. They'll have the water. We have a designated driver. Shit, and some groups of friends would pay to have somebody like Edgar in their lives. 
Right. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and when when people say those things, even those offhanded remarks, it actually it creates work for that other person who already made the decision to be the way they want to be. Now they now they somehow have to justify it in some way. I'm curious about something. Did you guys drink in like middle school or high school? Uh, oh yeah, I started. I started drinking when I was like fourteen. How about you, Edgar? Um, just about the same. Not, okay. I mean, not drinking like drinking every day, or you know, but like yeah, like I, you know, I mean, fourteen, fifteen, we would sneak around and and get like a forty and and all of all English and Hawaiian punch and mix it together and be like acting oh. like we were cool. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, so but I think but I think a lot. I'm, not, I'm sorry to cut you off, Doctor Dan, yeah. but I think a lot of it comes like, like I was just thinking about what Eric said about the smoking, and and how both his both his parents smoked, but he never did it. And I guess because you see it, you're in that environment. You know what I'm saying? But then one person could change that forever. I think it's the same thing for me. Like my father smoked when I was younger. And, and I think as a kid, when you see a grown up doing stuff, you're like, oh my God, that's so cool. You know, like I tried it. I, I smoked. I, I mean, I, I quit smoking. Jesus, 29, 28 years ago, 28 years ago, I quit smoking, you know, but I started the same way. I, I started smoking and I didn't even like smoking. I, I hated it. I hated it. I hated the way it made me feel. I hated the way I stunk afterwards. But just to like look cool, I would do it just to like fit in. Just right. like you know, like you don't want to be the one dude in a group of five guys, everybody smoking. You're the only one just looking there, like, like what the hell are you doing here, bro? You not, you know what I'm saying? You know what's weird? Um, one of the things that helped me not give in to peer pressure on a lot of things, which I I really don't give in to peer pressure on many things, and I didn't even back then. I think one of the things that helped me most is that I already felt very different from everybody. Uh, my background of having, you know, my father die and being from a different kind of family, being adopted by my dad, various things. I was very used to, I was used to actually the idea of being perceived as the same, but feeling different inside. And in a way that freed me up to just do my own thing. So I didn't have my first, my first drink until I was 20. Mm-hmm. I was like, I had wanted nothing to do with it. Wow. And, um, and my friends at the time, um, they knew like, don't talk, don't talk to Dan about these things. Like, uh, and uh, listen, um, in fairness to them, I probably did come off as a little judgmental about it. Um, I didn't like, I didn't like them drinking. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't because like, I think it's bad. I actually just felt like they were not drinking for the right reasons. None of them were. Mm. And, you know, I was like, 14 years old watching this stuff at 14, 15, 16, all those ages. But I just felt like they weren't being themselves. And that, that is what bothered me, not the drinking. I mean, the drinking Mm -hmm. may have bothered me in some way, but I just was, I was watching them and I was like, you're good as you are. Why are you, why are you doing this? Like actually for me, peer pressure is something that I, I almost rebel against directly. The minute I see it, (laughs) it was really interesting. And you know, what's crazy that, when we were younger, it was way different. You know, when we were kids, I mean, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have none of that stuff. So it was way different. So we're probably drinking and smoking. But nowadays, I got to look at it, all these kids growing up now and all this peer pressure that comes from everything that they see on TV, from every music video. From, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, there's kids out there right now that they, they, they want to be throwing money because, oh, they see that on a, on a rap video. So I think nowadays it's way harder for the youth and was for us. You know what I'm saying? There are still music videos? Yeah. Nobody sees that thing. You see it on YouTube. Still, make, still making those? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> like, what? Um, I, I really, I didn't think that. You know, I, not for nothing, you know, if you think about, think about how peer pressure worked, and I mean, you really got to feel bad for this current generation. Our peer pressure was our block, our neighborhood, our school, right? Oh, now the it's current, the then now it's global. Now, global, now you yeah. can now that you can feel pressure from people showing a life that's completely fake on Instagram, and feel, and and to me, you know, I think that's the worst kind of peer pressure are the people that are pretending to have really good lives, and and just mm-hmm. putting it out there as content, and people are watching it and comparing their lives to those lives, which are complete lies, right? 
but they're compared and they're feeling this pressure to try to improve and get better. I mean, you know, it's like like when I started drinking at 14, it's because I was hanging out with 17 year olds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was more of I wanted to keep up with the 17 year olds kind of peer pressure. It wasn't that I saw a fucking TikTok video. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, that that's complete. I think that's I think it's even worse than because you can't even avoid young people, especially. But I mean, maybe not even adults. I mean, adults can be just as susceptible to uh, peer pressure from social media. I don't think. Oh, I'm I shouldn't sure, just yeah. say kids. I shouldn't it's, just it's say a different, young people. I think they pressure for different things usually, but right, it's, but they, it's but, very similar. Right, but they're still, mm -hmm. you know, you're never too grown to fall for peer pressure. I almost went to a ceremony two months ago. <laughs> That's right. That was very dangerous. So. Now let me ask you guys this. Do you guys feel like you ever peer pressure other people? In other words, okay, I'll explain this, right? So we have this show because we feel like men need to talk more. We feel like men need to connect with their emotions more, open up more, let it out. So when when I talk to men um, about this show, I'm sort of peer pressuring them, you know, yeah, yeah. to be a yeah. certain way. So so what you know, like like what determines the the, the a positive peer pressure against a negative peer pressure? You know, we see the peer pressure that comes at us. But how do we see when we're doing it to someone else? It's a really it's good point good. because I, I, I probably do um, apply some peer pressure in some way to be more open. Or as to, a therapist, yes, right? yeah, I would assume, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, look, I even, I even probably peer pressure people to not do peer pressure, like that, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I, I see it as bad. I guess the thing that I would say that maybe can make a difference is. Is is that peer pressure premeditated? <laughs> did did you actually mm. think before about whether this is good, whether it's fair? Um, and look, it's not always going to be, and people could find it annoying <coughs> or obnoxious or whatever. But at least if you're giving some thought to it, whereas I think a lot of peer pressure, they're not even giving thought to it. They're just in the whole group think. This is the way this mm -hmm. culture works. This is the way this group works. This is the way this industry works and they just aren't thinking for themselves so i can I, i'll say this if somebody's applying some peer pressure but they've at least thought for themselves at least they gave it some thought because then th whatever they might pressure about stands a chance of, of having some value at the same time mm -hmm. i also there are plenty of times where i don't let's take my mind body work you could say that i peer pressure about that and I guess in a way that I do, but there are times where people will like, I just had an interaction on Facebook with uh, uh, a cousin of a, a good friend of mine. He was saying he had back pain. So I said, Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm an expert in this. If you want to talk about it, let me know. And he said, Oh no, it was because I drove too much, whatever. I was like, okay. yeah, yeah, you know, I, so in a way, in a way right there, you were the peer pressure, right? There. Well, I, like, oh. I was, but that's also a good example of that. I didn't mm -hmm. peer pressure in the end. I I, mm -hmm. I provided a gentle option, and when he pushed back against it, I was like, okay, I get it, you know. But that is a good point, though. That, that's a very good point. As men, that's what we should definitely do. You know, we could always peer pressure someone in the right way, but we, we can't force them to do it, and that's that's the problem. You know, uh -huh. I can't force Eric to quit smoking. Like, Eric, you, you got to quit smoking. You got to quit smoking. I'm just going to shut Eric down. I'm just going to be like, you know what? If I go with this bullshit, I don't hear this shit every time I see you. You know what I'm saying? So I guess we got to determine if we are going to do positive peer pressure, how to apply it without being so in the face with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I feel like, and we said this before in a few episodes where you plant the seed. You know, when someone watches the episode and sees it and see how we open up and how we talk about it. You know, that's it. That's all I care about because we are peer pressuring you in a little silent way where you might go home and be like, you know what? Maybe I should talk a little bit more. Maybe yeah. I, should what, tell like, someone. I mean, like, what if I don't say somebody say, what if I don't offer that little bit of help potentially mm -hmm. about back pain and then they have it for the rest of their lives? Like, so there has to be some balance. I think, you know, it's interesting when somebody's pressuring you about like where to get your news or whether to drink. These aren't things that help anybody um, mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, whereas I think some people are thinking about, I mean, I'm like, it's interesting, Eric, because one of the things I was thinking about is would, what would it, 
what would it be like and would you want it for somebody who just cared about you to be like, I would love if you would quit smoking just because I care about you. Like, I don't oh, know what that oh, would be like. I hear it. I hear it almost every day. Yeah. And it does not bother me at all. It does not make me shut down. Parts of it makes me feel guilty. <laughs> but and it, it makes me feel guilty about. Yeah, it does. It does. When someone you care about is always asking you to do something and you know in your head it's good for you. I was laughing because uh, I, I didn't want to be the one to make you feel guilty. I genuinely was asking just to find out. Like, no, what, no, no. I, I feel not that, not like being asked this question. No, I, not not at, not the way. I'm just saying that when my wife brings it up, I I, um, I can't help but feel guilty because, you know, she's not thinking of it. She's thinking of it long term. Where is she going to have to be the one that's watching me cough because I can't stop coughing? So you know, so when she when you know when. She she's more of a you know, she's there's a world of difference when someone as close as your spouse or your parent ask you to do something as opposed to a friend or even a close relative. They that's that's a different kind of request um, for t I wanted to answer Edgar's question that he asked earlier. Yes, I peer pressured people my whole life on so many different levels on so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think that. Like anything else in life, it's neither good or bad. It's how you use it that defines if it's good or bad. Pressure is not either good or bad. It's what the intent is and what kind of outcome you're trying to inspire out of it. You know, if you're trying to help a friend get over a death in the family and your pressure is to get them to go out and take a walk and, you know, get some fresh air then that's a different type of pressure than trying to force someone to have a drink if they're in recovery. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think where it becomes abusive is when you don't listen to the person's response and all you hear in your head is your desire to elicit a behavior and you continue to exert pressure. That's when I think you cross the line. That's a really mm -hmm. important distinction that I, I think we should highlight because, you know, if the intention is to help and you just wait in there a little bit, that's one thing. But if the other person is saying no, you, you, you never know what's going on behind the scenes for people, you know, mm -hmm. and it could, it could feel downright abusive or even be uh, abusive when we push it too much. Yeah. I agree with you. I mean, I, I think I, I, I got to agree with you, Eric. I, I was probably the same way. I probably peer pressure a lot of people, you know, in, in a lot of ways in more ways than one. But I think ever since we started this podcast, that has changed for me. You know, like, like, like I got to think about the other person. You know, I'm not here to fix everyone. I'm not here to fix everyone's problem. I'm not God to change everyone's life. But I feel like lately I, I think about it more before I tell someone, you know, what, what, why don't you do this or, or why don't you do that? You know, so I hold myself. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, but I just, I, I, I know my lane when it comes to giving someone some positive peer pressure. You know, as opposed to shutting them down, you know, because there's so many. We, we, we've been talking about positive, 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 but there's so many negative peer pressure as well within men. Cause we're worse with each other. You know, oh, man, you you're a punk ass. You know, you 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 oh, you can't bench or you can't play ball or you don't know sports. Those two right there. But listen, <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of negative peer pressure that I think men do with each other that sometimes needs to stop, man. You know, we need to look out more for each other instead of just like seeing everybody's downfalls or 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 mistake or or um or negativity you know yeah i mean look e even uh you guys know i play basketball on a weekly basis and there, there's a lot of peer pressure there where people are like you should essentially one of the messages that men tend to send to each other is you should be able to get whacked in the face without you know showing any emotion about it <laughs> like or uh, you know be stoic and uh, even I fall, and I'm like really not a peer pressure kind of guy. But when you're on a basketball court, the amount of peer pressure is like really strong. It's like mm. you're supposed to be this way about it. Here's a good example. Um, I, I was one of the things I hate most in basketball is uh, when you go up to take a shot and somebody says something to try to get in your head as you shoot. It's not like that's illegal or you suck wrong. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll be like he's off, 
And uh, to me, that's a total, it's a cheap shot. And it's toxic masculinity at its worst. Uh, not at its worst. Mm-hmm. It can be a lot worse than that. But it is toxic mas- masculinity. And I think that the expectation, the peer pressure expectation is that the guy who missed is the one who was being too sensitive. As opposed to there being peer pressure on that court to be like, dude, don't say that when he's shooting. Like, try to win fair and square. Like, don't, mm-hmm. don't do that stuff. So it's just interesting where we put our values in which in which time. For me, I would rather build somebody up, whether it's on the court or in real life or wherever we are. If I'm going to pressure anything, it's going to be towards helping. Otherwise, I'm not saying a word about that stuff. But mm-hmm. I think that comes with maturity too. Um, you know, when you were, when you when you're an older person and you know who you are a little bit. You you don't you don't need others to kind of do what you need them to do. You're okay with kind of doing what you do, and if people want to join you, that's fine. I had a friend in college that I I peer pressured in a uh, in in the in the effect that I would say, "Hey, let me drive your car. You have a car. I don't have a car. Let me drive your car." And I said, "Listen, let's go to New York for the day. Let me drive your car. So you always drive. Let me drive. You know." And he let me drive, and I proceeded to two hours later rear end somebody (laughs) you know and um of course i wasn't on his insurance and he's a 19 year old kid who who's who's just you know regretted meeting me that day and he had to come out of pocket and and pay for damages right there on on 149th and third avenue in the bronx which he, he had never been in the bronx before there was another thing i pressured this poor kid that came from the suburbs of long island yeah, come join me where I live in the South Bronx. Come hang out for the day. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to go see my people, and he had a car. So, but yet, but he would, but yet, yet he was my friend. We, but we hung out. We had our Star Trek marathons, all this stuff. But in old, as an older person, I could see that was not that was not a good friendship that I was providing. Yeah. That was a that was a transitional friendship. I was not being, mm-hmm. you know, I did not take that poor kid's uh, fear and the, his panic and the stuff he was going to feel to have to try to explain to his parents, what the fuck was he doing driving to the Bronx? But mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, because because you wanted to go spend the day there. So um, I think with maturity, you understand that you, you have to kind of like be more self-sufficient and not require anything from others that you can't provide for yourself. And... Uh, you know, it's funny because I thought of him as a friend, but I, that probably wasn't a good way to treat a friend. Yeah. Uh, just another example of peer pressure. Peer pressuring somebody into getting what you want. Yeah. Until you finally get it. You know what I'm saying? He, had, mean, a, he had a dope car, too. He had like a, <laughs> a like a 72 Dodge Dart. And this was in 1989. I mean, I think every guy goes through this when they first get their permit or they want to drive. It's like you ask. I remember how annoying I was. I could, I could, I'm actually call my father and ask him because I must have annoyed the shit out of him. Let me drive. Let me drive. Let me drive. And it was just me. And it was me and my brother. So now he he had a battle. We were just a year apart. So we were both of us trying to battle. Like, let me drive. Let me drive. He didn't let none of us drive. And I remember like being like you, Eric, asking my friends, yo, can I borrow your car? You know, and not thinking of the consequences that could come out of it. You know, my father's like, don't do that. You better stop doing that. Stop borrowing people's cars. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And now at my age, now I see it. Now I'm like, you know what? Look at this is a big ass responsibility. I mean, if you come up to me and be like, yo, Edgar, can I borrow your car? I'll be like, mm, peer pressure. And I walk, I run, I run away. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just run away, man. Because it's, you know, it's a lot. I mean, it's like, it's like you say, Eric, when we're little, when we're younger, Peer pressure affects us in different ways, you know, but it's it's crazy how we sometimes use it to get what we want, not realizing what that could do to the other person. I, I mean, I, I, I love the point and I've, I just want to make it in a, another way, which is that, you know, you have to realize the power of this stuff. You know, mm-hmm. we, we all can sway each other in all kinds of different directions. There's not it takes a while to get to that, that more mature place that Eric was talking about where you'd be thinking, all right, wait, is this, is this for good? Or even 
do I feel strong enough within myself to not be swayed in a given situation? And then on top of it, mm-hmm. you know, these things are very powerful, but in our society, and I, there's no other way to put it as far as I'm concerned. Our society is really backwards about certain things. And when I say our society, what does that even mean? Does it mean America? Does it mean the world? Who knows what it means? Or our generation? There's all kinds of ways you could define that. But the fact is, we really do have some things backwards. You know, the idea that in a situation where one guy is saying, hey, just drink, and the other guy is saying, I'm a recovered alcoholic, I'm not going to drink, that it would ever be a question about which of the two is in the right there is really crazy. But Mm -hmm. really, if you asked 100 people, how many of those people would say, yeah, what's wrong with that guy who won't drink? There's a good portion that would. That's sad. That, that then and you know that that's probably, and I think I think Charlie mentioned it that day. Uh, um, that a lot of that is other people's projection of the fear of their own issue, and that the the person that's in recovery is a mirror of the person they think or they know they should be striving to be, and don't like to be confronted with the truth. Um, I I myself don't have a problem with a person that doesn't drink when they go out. I have friends that don't drink and and I have no problem with it, but I'm okay with where I'm at with my drinking as far as I drink and this is how much I drink and this is what I how I drink. And I think that if you have, if you're a person that is not comfortable with where they're drinking but they're doing it anyway because maybe they're facing their own form of peer pressure, then the last thing they want is somebody to put a put a spotlight on what excessive looks like when you look at somebody not doing it at all. And I think right. if someone has a drinking problem, they don't realize how excessive they are until they have to spend time with someone that doesn't drink at all. Because then it's really obvious, like, damn, that's a lot of drinking. You know what I mean? And you don't notice that until you're comparing it to someone that doesn't drink. Like when I look at the, the FDA and they're like, this is what's considered excessive drinking, like four drinks a day for grown adults. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, really? Because uh, then everybody I know got a problem. <laughs> oh, that's funny because I, I I was laughing because I was like, that sounds like a lot to me already. <laughs> no, I mean, but but again, you know, but like four. <laughs> Doctor Ben is like four. You know, four. Uh, oh my God. like like a, a, a guy a guy will lose macho points if they can't polish off their own six pack. And keep in mind, that's a six pack supposed to be for people. But you know, but we. A dude will be like, yeah, I'm going to go get a six pack. I'm going to go kill this six pack. And it, but meanwhile, it's, it's supposed to be shared. Right. But um, uh, so that I think that's what it is with the with the people in the, in the groups when they see someone that's not drinking. They just don't want to kind of acknowledge that they need to slow down, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think Charles brought that up uh, that day when he when he came on the show. So um, mm-hmm. and he would know better than anybody. Um, I think it's harder, especially when comedians can be very creative when they insult and get under people's skin. So I can only imagine it must have been worse mm. to have a gang yeah. of comedians. Well, actually, you know what? That that brings up another point, I think, about peer pressure that would be good to highlight, which is when there's a when there's a power dynamic and one person is like, you know, let's say the the cool kid or the more experienced in the industry or whatever. I do think that we have some responsibility about that. I, you know, it's funny. I'm even thinking about it now. Like I'm, I'm talking about the side of peer pressure about people who don't drink getting pressured to drink. And that, that's certainly bad, but you know, I also don't want it to come across as like, well, now we're going to go judge people who do drink. Cause like that, that pressures people in a different way that, that makes them feel like, well, now I'm on display in a certain way and I've got a, I got a, behave a certain way and if you are in a position where people look up to you then it changes the picture you, do you guys remember when charles barkley said i'm not a role model do you remember oh this? yeah big time now that was you know that at the time that was taken as a huge insult people really reacted had a strong reaction to that right well what's your what's your take on it eric um i think that you know i think that it was a good advertising slogan i think it was wrong I think it was incorrect. I think that, you know, when you are someone that is emulated by young people that will buy shoes with your name on it because they want to be like you, 
then your impact goes beyond selling tickets and shooting a basketball. And I think even Charles Barkley has acknowledged that in his later years, again, with maturity. This is one, this was a guy that once threw a guy through a plate glass window at a nightclub. So it can all change, right? Um, you know, so, I, but at the time, he thought he was saying the right things. I, I'm just here to play basketball. And I think, you know, I hate to quote Spider-Man, but um, with great power comes great responsibility. And that is true. Whatever kind of power you have, you have a, whether you know you have an influence or a friend or a family member or a group of people, then I think you have a responsibility to use that power wisely and not try to get them to do what you want them to do. And if you are trying to get them to do something, make sure it's something that would benefit them and not benefit you. You know, um, so, yeah. yeah. I totally agree. And I, I remember thinking at the time, and I was like in high school, I think, when he said it, but I thought... Uh, Charles Barkley isn't the one who gets to decide if he's a role model, actually. N nobody gets to decide if they're a role model, except for the people who follow them. <laughs> so, you know, the fact is, he didn't get to make that choice. And I, know, I understand he didn't understand it at the time, and I also even understand that he could have felt like, well, this isn't fair. I just wanted to play basketball. I didn't ask to be a role model. But, you know, the reality is, whether you ask to be a role model or not, you are if people are looking up to you. Yeah, true. Very true. I feel I, pressure to ask you this question, Dr. Dan. <laughs> I'm just listening to you guys talk, and I'm like, man, there's so much peer pressure in so many ways, so many little ways that it could come into, like, come into our lives. But I wanted to ask you this. for How does someone, because you said you don't, you don't fall into the peer pressure, so obviously you can see it when it's coming towards you. Not everyone has that power, but how do you deal? How does a how does a man deal with someone who's peer pressuring them in a negative way? How do you how do you like tell that person no? How do you shut yourself down? What should you do? You know, I mean, obviously if Eric's telling me something like, "All right, you gotta do this, you gotta do this," and he's my boy, and I'm like, "Yo, whatever, man," and, and we always like, "Yeah, whatever," and we always snap on each other back and forth, but we're not really fixing the problem. So how do you, how does someone stop negative peer pressure from coming? into your life. Well, I think you just brought up one of the key points. One of the reasons that we don't get to step out of peer pressure is because we don't want to acknowledge that it's happening. Mm. So if we don't acknowledge it, then we, we're stuck in the game. But if we come back out and we actually observe it and we're like, dude, I don't want to do it. You know, why are you, why are you pressuring me? Suddenly it's a, an actual serious conversation where the other person has to deal with that. So I think one of the main things that we want to do is go ahead and acknowledge it. But here's the other thing. You're not going to be able to do that very easily if you don't already feel like you've got the good relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you need to do is decide, why am I going to betray myself? Even in small ways. I'm not saying to be selfish and do everything the way you want, but why would we betray ourselves for these little things when people are pressuring in certain ways? I mean, I remember actually uh, my cousin who I'm close to, and he's a great guy. He would he just often wanted to do a certain thing that I didn't want to do. Usually it was like going out to a bar. I, I didn't drink much, and I didn't like being in a bar because I couldn't hear anybody. It just wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I for a long time, I wouldn't tell him. And then at one point, I was like, you know, it's just not my thing. And he was like, oh. It's not. You he, could have said that know. ten years ago. <laughs> right, right. So I think we lost some valuable time here. <laughs> I do. I do think that it is. It is. Um, it fits with this show that part of the the part of the solution is to go ahead and be yourself and say it out loud and make it a real discussion. Because I think people just they're afraid to be different. You yeah. know, especially for men. I think men are like we're so competitive with each other in a lot of more ways than one that I just feel like you just you don't want to be the dude like like for me for example I'll use me as an example I don't watch sports I'm not into sports I don't care about sports I mean I can see a game but I don't care about it you know but for years I was like man I feel pressure somebody yo what you think about that game and I'm like uh, uh I, I, I don't know what to say I don't know you know what do you, what do you think about so and so and I was like ah and, and I would try to hide it and now I don't care now I don't care dude I'm not into sports man I don't follow sports like that People look at you like, whoa, for real? That's weird. And, it, you know, but that's it. But at least you, you shut that shit down right well, away. And then, you know, you're going to find other people who are like, oh, that's cool. 
what do you like? And they and it's mm. kind of like what Eric was saying about like if somebody tells you that they don't drink, that doesn't have to be the end of the conversation. We just have to get used to different kinds of conversation with different kinds of people, and stop trying to get everybody to fit. You know, it's, if, as long as there's space. no judgment coming from either side, then that then you know I I think you could give as much advice and offer as much peer pressure for for people to do whatever, whatever, whatever. But I think as long as you respect the person on the other side and they respect what you're doing. Then we can have a we can have a conversation about it because there's there's really no there's really no reason why that conversation shouldn't take place. Oh, this is amazing! I just want you guys to know I've had a lot of fun on this episode, man. You know, and I think we could go on <laughs> for forever just talking about it. But I want to ask this, I want to I want to say this to the viewers and the men watching this and everything. I want you to comment down below. Comment down below of. One of the worst peer pressures that you've ever had, you know, one one of the most annoying peer pressures we you ever had. I want I want comments down below. I want people to talk about it, and, and let's let you know let's let's say it out loud, and see if we could definitely stop it and become better at, at this. Because peer pressure comes from every way, shape, or form, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot to keep it all away, and you know, that's it. That's all I have to say. Well, I think I think you're making a good <laughs> point because we got to say these things, and we want to hear it. So. Definitely. Put your comments below. Yeah, comment we'll talk below, about it man. next episode when we come back. Right, <laughs> yeah, that's good. good. That's a good one, man. Um, it's been fun, man. It's just fun, guys. Uh, I just want you guys to know that I was peer pressure. I'm not telling you guys how my how I've been doing, so I'm going to say it now. I've been good. <laughs> I've been good. <laughs> that's how we're going to end the podcast. So I just want you guys to know that the last three weeks for me have been good. Um, but, um, wow, we, I'm we happy, just man. totally blew them off, right? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I say, yeah, Yo, we never I'm circle back everybody? to it. I say I'm asking everybody when nobody's nobody cares about me. I think, that was peer pressure. I think even Greg typed something in the chat box. That's <laughs> Edgar. That's Edgar how he's doing. Don't no, Greg was typing. Edgar? I had a good week. He wasn't even asking about Edgar. Ed, Greg was typing the highlights of his week. Like, oh, I got a new TV. <laughs> nah, man. But you know what though? I, I said this to someone yesterday, and and I truly believe it. I think this this show for me has been the best therapy. You know, since we started this, you know, it has been the, like the best and I look forward to it. And sometimes I stress it and I'm like, oh, my God, because because I don't know how it's going to go. Not recently, though. And I think now I think even on our production meetings is so easily. Yesterday, we were, we were talking about peer pressure. That's it. That's what we did. You know, and then just the magic just happens because I want it to flow like that, like a conversation. I want people to know it's not you don't have to think about everything you say. Just let it out. You know, so this show has really helped me a lot. And I, I, I thank you guys for peer pressuring me into being a better man, into opening up, because that's there's always positive as well. Nobody ever talks about the positive, but thank you. I want to thank you guys for for helping me be this this man that I'm becoming and and being better, a better human being. So that's a that's a positive um, peer pressure right there. I just wanted to throw well, that at you guys. Thanks for saying it, Edgar, and, and <laughs> you do the same for us. You trying yeah. to make trying to make me cry in public? Motherfucker, <laughs> that's the pressure. That's that's, that's the pressure. That's you a see what I'm type. saying? That's that's a different type of pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I love you. No man, come on. I love it. You know what I love, Eric? I'm same. Like, and, and, and it's crazy. In the past couple of weeks, ever since we did the <laughs> the same, ever since we did the uh, the whole hesitation of I love you and how men don't tell each other that they love each other, and it's weird. In the past couple of weeks, um, Eric and I have gone through. A, a little trauma with a good friend of ours and and it's crazy because every friend that I've talked to in the past couple of weeks I've said I love you too and they say it right back and and it felt and it feels good you know what I'm saying so if if, if guys if you want to do a positive peer pressure tell that guy in your life that you know you look up to and, and help him who's there for you tell him you love him express your feelings like that I love you Eric I love you Dr. Dan love you Edgar See love how you, you Dr. Too. Dan that the man hesitated. Same. Peer pressure. I only I only hesitated because Eric was speaking. I have no hesitation about my love for you guys. Same. And I really mean it. I mean this this show. It's a place where we like. I don't feel pressure here at all. Mm -hmm. I get to be myself, and that's because of you guys. So thank you. And the more we do it, the more natural it feels. Mm -hmm. And, that, space, and that's man. what I like. It's a definitely a safe space. And if if you enjoy the show, please, like I said, comment down below. Tell us your worst or, or most positive peer pressure, and, and you know, share this share this video with someone, and let's become better men, yo. Let's definitely become better men. Dr. All right, Dan, I'm I'm gonna take, take us this out. out. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we'll get back to you personally. 
Brothers in arms. Brothers in arms. Primordial machismo. <laughs> Need to be a better man. To be a better man. <laughs> <laughs> and we're clear. <laughs> <laughs>